Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about Palantir Technologies and SoFi Technologies. We're also going to be analyzing two articles to where the first one is titled, Palantir, the $250 million deal is a positive, but not for near-term profits. So we're going to be jumping into this article to discuss what this financial reporter thinks about the overall company, whether or not he advocates to buy sell or hold this company, what are the pros and cons coming up for this company, and whether or not this company is going to be a good long-term investment despite short-term fluctuations. After that, we're going to move on and talk about SoFi Technologies, ticker symbol SOFI, where SoFi gets an Arena League partnership in a new primetime golf effort backed by Tiger Woods and other prominent names. So if you want more videos on SoFi Technologies or Palantir Technologies, don't forget to go and annihilate that like button right now. Now, literally go ahead and obliterate it right now because it helps me out a ton. And if you are investing into Palantir and SoFi, you would want others to see this video as well. On top of that, don't forget to go and subscribe to the channel for more news updates just like this one, or become a member of the channel for as little as 99 cents to support me personally. But if you don't want to do that, don't worry. By subscribing, you're going to get this content for absolutely free. And with that being said, let's jump right into today's stories. Palantir Technologies, as you already know, is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies, and they specialize in artificial intelligence and machine learning. The author says that we continue to believe that Palantir is uniquely positioned to leverage the growth that is happening in the artificial intelligence and machine learning segments, and it's positioning itself to be a very long-term winner in terms of U.S. government businesses. For instance, they recently acquired a $250 million deal with the U.S. Defense Department for research and development purposes regarding artificial intelligence as well as machine learning, and this is going to to increase the overall near-term positive sentiment surrounding the stock. But despite this, this author says that he has a hold rating on a Palantir Technologies PLTR stock, and we'll discuss exactly why he has a hold rating. And honestly, I'm going to disagree with him in some aspects of why he has a hold rating, but in the end, I am going to agree with him, because right now the risk-to-reward profile of this company is very high, because they could end up surging and taking off after they win the $590 million contract with the NHS, or potentially they could split that contract down the middle to where they are only going to acquire a little less than $300 million of that overall contract if it was split between Palantir and another party. The author goes on to say that he thinks that Palantir is, quote, overhyped on artificial intelligence and that their current share price and market cap is trading at a premium, which means that it's trading too high above their fundamentals according to their overall growth projection projections, meaning that right now is not the best time to buy shares from a value standpoint, and it creates unfavorable risk for investors when we weigh the risk to reward profile for the second half of 2023. And again, those are his thoughts, not necessarily my thoughts. For me, I have a very long-term outlook on this company, and although I do agree with him in the short term, I think that Palantir will end up winning huge contracts in the future, which is going to make these contracts that are worth around 250 million look like chump change, which is why I'm really betting on them winning at least a part of or the the entire NHS contract as long as certain watchdog groups and politics don't get in the way of that. Additionally, the author says that they are having issues monetizing their artificial intelligence platform named AIP, and for me, I completely reject that logic, and he doesn't show any evidence for this. AIP has already been very successful specifically over in their commercial segment, and if you listen to my video on their AIP conference, you know that the demand for AIP, which is Palantir artificial intelligence platform is very high. So although this author doesn't see a clear near-term growth catalyst or a path for this stock to continuously rise due to them foreseeing future difficulties for this company to organically justify their current valuation and their future growth, I would disagree on that somewhat because the author and myself would disagree with each other on their AIP's demand right now and on their future growth trajectory because right now for the CAGR for the year, their revenue is supposed to be around 16%, but that is supposed to increase to around 19%. And this is not a revenue decline, this is a revenue incline, meaning that they are growing their revenues year over year, according to this year over year metric, which yes, will help justify their higher multiples, which we will talk about a little later. 
For the U.S. Defense Department deal that he referenced earlier, which is around $200 million, that is going to be spread out over three years, and it shows that Palantir works closely with the United States government, as well as various Western allies. And we also know that the United States government is very interested in artificial intelligence to be used in a defensive capacity, or even potentially an offensive capacity in certain situations. This is why Palantir services historically have been used by the United States military the FBI, CIA, and other Western military allies. And I personally like to support Palantir because they only do business with the United States and our allies. They're not selling any data to any other entity that could use it for harm. So I really respect Palantir for doing that. And although this does lower their overall global addressable market because they are not trying to find clients over in the East, I still respect Palantir that they are putting their overall mission above their revenue. But with that being said, I still think that Palantir has a fantastic growth trajectory ahead of them, even though I do agree with this author in the short term, the share price is going to be very volatile. The author also says that he believes that the financial outperformance of this stock, if it happens, will be due to an uptick in their commercial revenues and their government revenues instead of just their government revenues. And I've been saying and beating this drum for quite a while because the key to the future growth of this company is in the commercial segment. Palantir has already been very integrated in government contracts and government agencies for around two decades. However, their commercial revenues are somewhat newer. And if we consider that their commercial revenues are already comparable to their government revenues, it's only a matter of time before their commercial revenues outpace their overall government revenue growth. Right now, we haven't seen that because their commercial revenues are growing at a CAGR of around 10%, while their government revenue grew by around 15%. To me, it's only a matter of time before commercial commercial enterprises really understand the value of what Palantir Technologies can do for their overall organization. But let's talk about the stock itself. Let's talk about their overall multiples, what this means, and if right now is a good buying opportunity. Palantir's PLTR stock currently trades above their peer group at an 11.9 times EV over C2024 sales versus their peer group average of 8. And ideally, we would want a lower number than their overall peers. However, when we look at their price to earnings ratios, we see that the stock is trading at around 59.3 times for 2024 compared to their peer group average, which is 100 times or rather over 100 times, meaning that when we look at their price to earnings ratio or PE multiple, Palantir actually has a leg up in this regard. And Palantir absolutely dominates the competition when we look at their PEG or PEG ratio, which is far more competitive than their overall industry peers. Currently, Palantir is a moderate buying opportunity considering that they place towards the center of their overall peer group regarding various accounting ratios and metrics. On some accounting ratios they perform better and on others they don't. But again, this is only a matter of time before these accounting ratios change based upon their future growth trajectory regarding their revenue, earnings per share, free cash flow, and other metrics like that. This is why we then look to Wall Street professionals who know these accounting ratios like the back of their hand, and they use analysis to determine if Palantir is a good buying opportunity. Currently, the majority of Wall Street analysts are bearish and negative on this stock, where 17 analysts are currently covering the stock, while three of these analysts are saying to buy the company, seven of them are saying to sell, and another seven are saying to hold, just like the author of this article. Currently, Palantir's PLTR stock trades for $15 per share, but the median price target among these professionals is $16, while the mean price target is $14, which means that Palantir is trading appropriately at $15, which is in between the median price target and the mean price target. That's why this author ultimately says just to hold a Palantir Technologies, and I can respect him for doing that. If you already have a healthy position in this company, there's no need to add to your position. Now, if you don't own this company, I would highly suggest that you do your own research and look further into this company if you are a long-term investor who can afford to take on some extra risk because after all, this company is very risky. That's why I only advocate for around a 5% initial portfolio allocation for this company. But overall, I think that Palantir has great upcoming capital 
catalysts, such as the NHS contract which they could win sometime at the end of October. So we are going to have to see how all of that pans out, and then after that, we are also going to get their earnings report in the beginning of November. So two catalysts are literally back to back for this company, but only time will tell what the market deems Palantir to truly be worth. Now let's talk about SoFi Technologies, which is a fintech company or a financial technology company that operates as a digital bank. If you didn't know, SoFi has already sponsored a 3.1 million square foot stadium for the Los Angeles Rams, which the Los Angeles Rams use for an NFL or the National Football League venue. This is very good marketing on SoFi Technologies' part because they want to get their name out there, and what better way to do it than attract sports fans? SoFi Technologies is also embracing this way of marketing because they are also infiltrating the golf world. So not only do they have the NFL, which is the National Football League, but they are also infiltrating and innovating in the golf world to where they are using sports as a great way to market to various people and different age groups. SoFi Technologies, which is a digital personal finance company, has now been the sponsor of a new high-tech team in the golf league to where SoFi is becoming the TGL first commercial partner, which is very good news. In addition, the league's 250,000 square foot purpose-built arena in Palm Beach, Florida will be named SoFi Center. So we have SoFi Stadium, and now we also have SoFi Center. SoFi Stadium in regards to football, and SoFi Center in regards to golf, and this is going to help SoFi Technologies bring in more people to use their overall banking products and services. And if you see on screen here, here is a a picture of what that is supposed to look like regarding SoFi Center. The CEO of SoFi, who is Anthony Noto, even commented by saying, to achieve our goal of becoming a top 10 financial institution, it's critical that we build brand awareness and trust with consumers to become a household name. Investing in sports has proven unequivocally valuable time and time again in helping us unlock this goal. So clearly they have had huge success from the overall ads from SoFi Stadium, and they are trying to integrate themselves over in other sports as well. I can't wait for them to potentially do basketball in the future, or the Olympics, but that will be a story for another time. SoFi Center is on the campus of Palm Beach State College, and it will be able to hold nearly 2,000 fans, to where the surface of this area is approximately the size of a football field, and if you look on screen again, you can see exactly what we are dealing with over here, and overall, I think this is a very good marketing move for SoFi Technologies. We even had the founder and CEO of TMRW, who is Mike McCarley, say that the team at SoFi is driving tremendous innovation in uniquely building lifetime relationships in financial services by leveraging technology to make a complete suite of products accessible to their members. He goes on to say, in the same way, our vision for TGL is to create a new way for sports fans to experience golf by harnessing the power of technology to make sports more immersive, culturally relevant, and accessible for all. In the end, this is a phenomenal news update for both Palantir Technologies as well as SoFi Technologies. Palantir Technologies has two upcoming catalysts, which would be the potential winning of half or the entire NHS contract, worth in total around $590 million, and they also have their earnings report, which is going to be a few weeks after that in the beginning of November. When we look over to SoFi Technologies, we also see very good catalysts and them making great moves over in sports with SoFi Stadium as well as SoFi Center so they can infiltrate the overall golf world. SoFi Technologies will continuously market until they obtain more and more members, which will help their top and bottom line until eventually they become a top 10 financial institution. I love that goal by their CEO because if they could become a top 10 financial institution, if you buy into this company now, the sky is truly the limit for this company to become a large cap blue chip bank. But before you invest, always make sure to do your own research on Palantir Technologies and SoFi Technologies. Make sure that it's appropriate for your portfolio, your risk tolerance, and any variables you have. And if you want more news updates on Palantir Technologies PLTR stock and SoFi Technologies SOFI stock, go ahead and obliterate that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and don't forget to become a member of this channel to support me personally for more videos like this one. With all of that being said, I wish you the best of luck, and I will see you in the next YT video.